If you're wondering what I'm reading right now, it's this book. With Amazon basing an entire five-year series on the back of a book and having to create characters because they don't have the rights to them, let's look at the real prequels to Lord of the Rings. I did a video on the Silmarillion, now let's look at the Unfinished Tales. First, what is the Unfinished Tales? The Unfinished Tales is a collection of stories and essays by J.R. Tolkien that were never completed during his lifetime, but they were edited by his son Christopher Tolkien and published in 1980. Many of the tales are retold in the Silmarillion, but able, partly in modified form, but it also contains a summary of events of the Lord of the Rings from a less personal perspective. Unlike the Silmarillion, this, which was published um, in fragments and modified, into, uh, modified to connect into a cohesive work, the Unfinished Tales presents them as Tolkien left them, with little more than names changed, the author had a confusing habit of trying different names for characters when writing drafts, and thus some are incomplete stories. Other collections of information on Middle-earth which followed each tale um, is followed by long notes explaining inconsistencies and obscure points. It was edited by his son out of love and just created this beautiful work that is a phenomenal read, because you really do get an insight into a lot of Tolkien's creative process as well. This is part of the Legendarium, but also it was encouraged by the results of this, Christopher Tolkien started creating the history of Middle-earth, this massive multiple volumes of work, which are brilliant pieces to own. And I only own them digitally, which kind of sucks. But the Legendarium of his work is important. So, Amazon do not have the rights to this. They do not have the rights to Silmarillion. You could create a prequel series out of all of this. This contains tales from the First Age, Part 2 is the Second Age, and the Part 3 is the Third Age, and then Part 4 is, is a different thing. But it goes into the full creation of Middle-earth in many ways. It's a great way of going into these kind of mythological stories that interlink Tolkien's work and his ideas you could easily create a phenomenal movie or a series out of this with the right creative team. But obviously they have no interest in this. Because they don't own the rights, they've had to change characters and create characters to fill the void. And they've obviously looked at these works in some form or another to do that, which is counterproductive. The Unfinished Tales presents a creative process. It presents a work, a body of work, which takes you into Tolkien's world, his creative process. And I will say, I don't think the book is for new readers, or even ones that have only read The Hobbit. I think this is for Tolkien fans. This is for, if you've read Lord of the Rings and you know those stories in and out, I recommend picking this up. It's getting the notes and seeing that process and seeing what he created, and seeing an ex extra world and these this kind of history. Tolkien is the master of world building in this concept, that people forget, that people that have only read The Lord of the Rings forget there is a much bigger world to explore, different ages, from lost continents underwater, to fall of ancient cities and people, to creating something that is this cohesive body of work and genuinely a beautiful body of work and I'm so glad that these got released and put out into the world. These present Tolkien's work in this unconstructed, unedited form. You can see that process of when he was pulling ideas together when he was pulling everything together. You have the history of Middle-earth. You have this huge body of work, the Legendarium. It's huge, and beyond any fantasy writer today, in complete honesty. When he created these works, when he created this, I don't know if they were ever intended to be published. 
I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. There are several other unpublished works by him as well um, that are available in fragments. You can read them. You can go into, you know, you can find this sort of 14-page treatment for a sequel to The Lord of the Rings. You can find his other works. And beautiful books such as The Nature of Middle-earth and countless other things that are available. They published some of these stories in more of a novel form in the last few years, and they're worth picking up. The First Age stuff is stunning. And and there's other books as well, such as The History of the Hobbit and things like that, that people do look over. People just see The Lord of the Rings and go from there. And I see a few complaints about The Lord of the Rings, but actually, if you read these, you would understand what you're complaining about is relevant. A beautiful body of work presented in a creative, unfielded and unedited form is a rare thing. And just to read the writing firsthand and see that process and to see these stories and characters who are epic and big and take you on that journey through Middle Earth, through the First Age, through the Second Age, Third Age, it brings you into that. I've read this book cover to cover several times and I ended up buying a beautiful illustrated edition not that long ago because I it was on sale. The illustrated edition is stunning and actually had some letters from Tolkien and some other notes from Tolkien into the work. If you're a Lord of the Rings fan, I recommend this book. I also recommend that you read this instead of watching Amazon's debacle.